Back in 1989, Toyota launched a new premium brand called Lexus, with just two cars, one of them being the ES250. This is the sixth generation of that founding member, the 2013 ES350. Obviously, it wasn't just a passing fad. ES is not the best-selling Lexus, that title belongs to the RX crossover, but it is their most popular sedan, so you figure for the new model they wouldn't mess with the original formula too much. I think you know where this is headed. To begin with, there's a hybrid model for the first time, the ES300H, that averages 39 miles per gallon. But I'm focusing on the standard 350, since Lexus thinks that 75% of buyers will choose it. ES has been a car with soft lines and even softer ride quality. Apparently, current owners wanted it to man up a bit. The new face of Lexus, the spindle grille, gives it a more aggressive look. We believe it is a little bit more masculine, but you know the same crowd looking at the current generation ES and driving that car, they've been asking for this car. Here's a quick peek at the outgoing model's interior, and then the new one. Quite a dramatic difference, no? That attitude continues with the driving dynamic. The ES remains quiet and comfortable. That has not changed, but they have tweaked the suspension. It definitely handles better. Not a sports sedan, but it is improved. The 2013 ES feels more buttoned down with a more confident on center feel. We actually took the front coil springs and actually had them wound reverse. So as a car bounds and rebounds, it will bound straight. We've also taken shocks rebound the shocks so I still get my luxury ride, but I also get a sporty ride. And the rear suspension has been tweaked a little bit too, so I get a good straight line stability. The 350 is powered by the familiar 3.5 liter V6 that makes 268 horsepower and 248 pound-feet of torque at 4,700 RPM. <laughs> The six-speed transmission with manual mode gets some new gear ratios. Eco mode squeezes out an extra MPG or two. Sport sharpens up the gas pedal response and gives the steering wheel a heftier feel. Acceleration. Uh, plenty of power. Most people will be very happy with this. Zero to 60 happens in about seven seconds and there's little to no torque steer. ES remains a front wheel drive car. Radar assisted cruise control is available. Lane departure alert lets you know when you start wandering over the lines. ES wants you to sharpen up too. The ES 350 improves to deliver an EPA rated 21 miles per gallon city, 31 highway. In addition to the new vibe inside the cabin, there's new tech. Blind spot warning will help keep you out of trouble. The Nform system can run apps like Bing Search and Pandora Streaming Audio using the data plan from your smartphone. When backing up, cross path detection warns if traffic is coming from the side. The optional Mark Levinson surround sound system rocks. Seats are heated and cooled. They get more side bolstering too. Even better, the wheel gets heat. Personally, I'm a touchscreen kind of guy, so I'm lukewarm to the remote touch interface, even with its haptic feedback. You might be different. It's one of those things you need to experience for yourself. All right, you all know the drill, right? I adjust the front seat for the correct driving position, and then... Then I, evil twin, assess the back seat. We're both 5'9", by the way. There's nearly three more inches of knee room. Leg room's up by four. It would be easy for three adults to get comfortable back here in the sculpted seats. A little surprising, though, there's no heated seats or climate zone back here. No door storage, either. At least there's a power port and pockets on both seats. Haven't seen you in a while, why so scarce? It's not like testing back seats is making me a lot of money. It's not like the front seat is very lucrative. At least I get to choose the music. Gripes? Well, a power shade would come in handy with the optional panoramic roof. The transmission lever in this pre-production car is hardly silky smooth, look for that. And a manual parking brake is less Lexus, more Toyota. When I travel to a press launch, I'm far away from my bath tissue supply, so I've got to substitute that TP with something. Luggage makes sense. Even if you overpack, there should be no problem getting luggage in here for a long weekend. Need more room? Uh, sorry, the seats don't fold. There's just a ski pass through on the 350. Safety? Well, the ES is built with more high strength steel this time around, and there are 10 airbags. N form with Safety Connect is much like OnStar. A year's worth of service is included. 
A quick look at the 300H hybrid model. Other than the badges, the only real difference seems to be the blue trimmed Lexus logo and the lack of visible tailpipes. The gas engine is a 2.5 liter four cylinder that runs on the Atkinson cycle. Total system horsepower is 200. The water pump, power steering, and AC are electric. This engine does not have accessory belts. The transmission switches from a six speed to a continuously variable unit, switch into sport mode, and the energy gauge turns into a tachometer. The big news inside is the wood goes from the 350's bird's eye maple to eco-friendly bamboo. Like all Toyota hybrids, it can pull away on electric power alone. The gas engine powers up when more oomph is needed. The battery gets charged when coasting and braking. It's about a second slower to 60 miles an hour than the 350, but that's made up by 40 MPG in the city, 39 highway. As you might imagine, the battery pack takes up space in the trunk, three cubic feet to be exact, and the pass-through is gone. The shape of the 2013 ES isn't radical, but it is different from the outgoing car, shown here in white. The scallop in the C-pillar is gone. The lines of the new model are more upright and bold. The body's made a little bit longer, almost an inch. We've got, got a two-inch longer wheelbase on the car. So all in all, the, the outside body, we've made it a little wider. We've uh, got the bold fenders. We've got the new spindle grille. It's an all-new car. Prices won't be set until the 2013s start arriving in August. My guesstimate is that it will start at around 38 grand with destination fully loaded around 46. It's a good solid update to a good solid car, perfect for real estate agents who need a comfortable ride and a big back seat. The ES350 is a founding member of the Lexus family. That's keeping up with the times. Full disclosure, I attended a press launch just outside of Portland, Oregon, if you haven't figured that out. You might have noticed in the static shots that the ES has LED running lights. Just so you know, they were somehow turned off while shooting the running footage, so it's not your imagination. Here's the lone shot of them once we figured that out. And it's always fun to get creative with GoPro cameras. My drive partner, John Vincent of the Oregonian newspaper, suggested this might be a cool shot. I agree. Very mesmerizing. So that's my preview of the 2013 Lexus ES350. Didn't do an awful lot with the hybrid. I hope to get one for a week and do a much, much more thorough job because hybrids are a little bit more complex. Now, since you've made it to the end, I'm assuming you find these mildly entertaining. So if that's the case, please do me a favor. Tell your friends, tell your family, your hamster, your dog, anybody who likes to watch car reviews about drivencarreviews.com. It is a small site, but I think we do a really good job. Very, very thorough testing in the real world. So please, only you can make this site more popular, okay? DrivenCarReviews.com. Thanks a lot. That's Driven. I'm Tom Volk.